Welcome to another episode of Exploring Possibilities, available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, my website, journeyofpossibilities.com. And now the best of the best are hitting the YouTube channel at YouTube slash Cheryl Sitz. I am Cheryl Sitz, your host. We're right here every week. We have some of the most interesting, inspiring conversations on the planet. As you know by now, my mission is to explore holistic, spiritual ways that we can transform life from the inside out. If you like what you hear, please support us so we can keep these coming to you we would really appreciate it you can do that at journeyofpossibilities.com slash support our show and website are the skillful creations of tech shaman mario rosales of tech life balance and mario can help you too in lots of ways tell us one of those mario well cheryl how i can help your listeners is have you ever had a computer crash on you and then how about recovering all those emails or you get a new phone and you're struggling to get all the configuration set up for all that to get all your emails, your calendars and your contacts, or maybe you lost your contacts. I have a solution where it synchronizes your computer, your phone, your new phone, your tablet or anything out there. And remember those viruses that sometimes come through your email, but well, that's the other part that this system protects you from. It protects, scans the email even before it gets to you. And also in case if you're, for whatever reason, you get one of those viruses that sends out emails, this system even scans the outgoing emails. So there, there's a lot of stuff in this one solution and it's only $15 a month. Go ahead and go to techlifebalance.net or mariorosales.net and find out more information on the email service. Who are you? Why? Are you here? What wonders and opportunities await you beyond physical death? What happened millennia ago to create the damaged earth and fractured societies you see around you? Empowering, enlightening, internationally acclaimed, the Joseph Communications books offer answers to these questions. Spiritual, concise, contemporary, non-denominational, the communications originate from Joseph, a highly evolved discarnate spirit concerned for you and the future of the planet and its peoples. The words of Joseph and his soul group give you the power to bring light and change into your own life and the lives of others and to restore the earth. Available in paperback, ebook and audiobook formats, the communications can be ordered today at www.thejosephcommunications.com and also from Amazon and other major booksellers. All proceeds are used for further publishing and advertising and to make the communications available worldwide. We have the most amazing build your own Peruvian shamanic experience coming in September and we would love to have you join us. Have you wanted to visit the Nazca lines and see those for real or go to the jungle and maybe work with a shaman of integrity and sacred plant medicine? How about Sacred Valley and Machu Picchu? We've got it all available for you and you can create the experience you want. You can get all the details at journeyofpossibilities.com slash events. Now for today's guest. I met her through my work with Eva Marquez and our Facebook group, Harmonic Convergence 333. Laura Marjorie Miller is an inner and outer explorer who's been kissed by a manatee calf, turned into a vine in Peru, then flirted with by Val Kilmer, and danced with the <laughs> dolphins of, <laughs> of Hawaii and Mermini. She's been published in Fairy Magazine, Elephant Journal, and several other publications. And she's also got her first book out, The Flagrant Joys of Solo Travel, released this year on Kindle. Laura advocates traveling with our whole body as a way to restore the relationship between humans and earth. You can find her online at lauramarjoriemiller.com. And I'm so glad she's with us today. Hey, Laura. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> that I'm laugh came to through. To Peru. <laughs> that was a big experience for me. So I, Yeah, you turned into a vine. I know. We're, well, we're kind of jumping the gun here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're a couple of fairies playing here today. Who knows? Where should we start? Where do you think... I like to let my listeners get to know my guests a little bit. So where do you think would be a fun place to jump in and let them kind of get to know how you became a conscious woman and a world traveler like you are? Well, in the book, I got into traveling through, I'm going to start right off with like this bad relationship that I was in. <laughs> and that broke me into traveling. And the book 
tells the story about how I kind I got sort of into solo traveling backwards, but how that became a very healing experience for me. And, um, and it was healing in ways that um, eventually I appreciated the deeper meaning of, and that's why I wanted to write the book was to encourage people to, especially women, um, to do this on their own, because it's a way of establishing your relationship with yourself and the relationship that you have with the places that you visit, which of course are in the three dimensions, earth. So um, when you have your own relationship with these places and the experiences and the beings that you meet there, you you fall in love deeper and deeper uh, with the planet we live on and amid. And that's really important for everybody right now. It is. Okay, so kind of to give them a glimpse of who you are, because I do want to talk about the book a little bit, but like rewind a little bit. So were you spiritually conscious at the point that you were in this relationship and started traveling? Did you already uh, know about things like starseeds and light language and dolphins? And uh, I mean, were you who you are now? I did. um, I was a yoga practitioner and had been uh, since not like 1999. So I had a lot of spiritual literacy you know it's like the different layers of our as our evolution as ourselves sometimes come in different phases but I wasn't into at that point I wasn't into star seeds or um, that kind of consciousness but but much more aware of fairies and mythic consciousness I think Um, things sort of get added to our perceptions I believe as we as we mature, it yeah. doesn't phase the other stuff out. It's just like when you get ready for this next curriculum, right? It comes in. That's that's how I see it, and it builds on what you have a deep acquaintance with already. So yeah, I had a I had a spiritual practice, and and you know my my background, my family's background is is Roman Catholic, so I had you know that kind of literacy and a lot of and had um, was really interested in world religions. And then my own yoga practice and uh, witchcraft practice. So I had paganism. I just had a lot of different fluencies um, that really helped, I think, in their ways, move me through that time and, and get me give me the inner hidden uh, underground stream of life force to get through it. And, you know, even when it, that stream was pretty deep underground. So I love the way you said that you had a spiritual literacy and then went on to explain what that means. And it's so true because there's there's having this knowledge and this awareness and maybe we move in and out of practicing it, but it's completely different to choose to be a conscious being because we can go to sleep, especially in relationships. And that kind of leads into your book. I loved your book. I read a lot of books doing this show and oh my God, I, I, I started your book and I didn't stop till I finished it. I was like, I was in love with it. It's, it's candid, it's entertaining and it's raw and it's, it's jolting because for any listener who's ever been in any kind of a codependent relationship, pretty quickly I realized I was laughing at myself and wow, am I still doing these that, you know, like where is this still me? And um, so how does someone who is awake and has this spiritual literacy find herself lost in travel with, he seemed like a pretty unconscious guy. Oh God. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think what happens and there's some, there's a, there's a chapter in there that alludes to that where I had, um, I had just been through a divorce and this guy was my boyfriend after the divorce. And I think like a lot of people who are coming out of a failed relationship that they feel responsible for the failure of that you doubt yourself a lot and you doubt your, you, you doubt your intuition and you, and for me, I was, I was responsible for the demise of my marriage. And so I was really, I second guessed everything. I was like, I'm a selfish person. I, am I having the right, you know, am I having the right apprehension of things that are going on? And what happened is this guy, and he tends to, as I watched him over time, he tends to prey on women who 
are coming out of a divorce or relationship. It's kind of a pattern he has because I think that he knows that they're vulnerable. So what would happen was whenever a red flag would get thrown up, I would immediately uh, attribute my initial response to it as, oh, I'm getting this wrong. I'm a mm -hmm. selfish person and I'm having a selfish response to this. So I was deactivating my own um, sort of survival alerts a lot because I doubted myself so much. I doubted, um, I doubted the you know rightness of all of my responses. So when anything came up that I was unclear about, I just was like, okay, I'm getting, I'm wrong here, and I should be more giving. I should be, you know, less selfish. And, and over time, that created a really, really bad situation. <laughs> it's kind of dysfunctional. And, and yeah. you're, you do a wonderful job of, of sharing candid stories that are entertaining and amusing while at the same time being a real wake up call for the reader of helping us see where we we're doubting ourselves and doubting our feelings and doubting our worth causes us to give all our power away and give our peace away until we just find ourselves scrambling around behind some guy sometimes trying to keep up going, how, how did this happen? Right. <laughs> right. And another thing that happened was that relationship took me a few years to really heal out of. And even the healing came in several layers. And one of the first layers was going on all these narcissist boards. And a lot of people are probably familiar with those, like the narcissist does this. These are the types of things that a narcissist does and you're checklisting them. <laughs> and, and, and But then over, I was like, I don't want to be stuck in this kind of, and this is not to say this is a phase that people go through, but I was like, what did I contribute to this? What what was my what is my responsibility in creating and upholding this dynamic and that was when i really started doing the deep work on myself and seeing like when when was i involved in a situation where i was trying to maintain some kind of control and even if i didn't admit that i was you know because i didn't want to be alone and there's a couple points in the book where I mentioned this, it's like, I could have just left. Yeah. But why didn't I, you know, why didn't I just get out of the room and say no? And so that's kind of the book is about travel on one level, but on a deeper level, it really is about this heal, this deep inner healing, but that has to come with taking responsibility for your own choices. And they do create a dynamic that makes you more and more powerless yeah. as time goes on. But that's but actually then, a good thing because that's the wake up call. It's like at some point we go, wait a minute, I've given away so much of myself. I don't even recognize myself anymore. Like this isn't working. Right. No, it's not. And it's it's self harming. And I had to go through a few a few iterations of that before <laughs> I finally got all the way out. And I think, yeah, the book mentions that there are a couple of breakup episodes before the final one finally takes. But um, the solo travel was a big part of that where I would go out on my own and and ha and learn how to be by myself and learn like really by myself right in a, in a new place and to fall in love with that place to fall in love with the experiences I was having there that weren't triangulated through anybody else that it could just be me in an unmediated experience with the earth or a city or an animal. And I wasn't having to pay attention to somebody else's whimsies. Right. Well, and, and, and one of the yeah. best things that I think that you shared in that book is you touch upon the fact that there is a global sisterhood and that a woman traveling alone can reach out to other women in places if she feels uncomfortable, like that you're never really alone. And that's just in the incarnated field. Of course, we know we've got spirit guides and angels and we're never alone. But even within the incarnated beings, there is nothing stopping us from reaching out to another woman in a restroom or wherever and saying, hey, I need some help here. I'm in a weird situation or whatever. So yeah, that and you talk about an experience in there and I won't blow the story for anyone. <laughs> 
Um, but you talk about an experience where you're at a hostel and um, something gets a little weird and your intuition, you actually had a, a, a forewarning through a dream. And so when things started to happen, you went, that's what that was about. And you were able to take care of yourself. So you also kind of reveal how our dreams and our intuition and our guidance help us when we're alone. And so we're, we're just never really alone. It's a very reassuring book for, for a woman to travel alone. Yeah. It's like, and, and it's kind of both. It's like you are alone and that's important because you're not in this weird, you know, whatever give and take. You get to really say, well, what's me? What are my experiences that are yeah. authentic to me? And but then also you start to pick up on these other things that are supporting you that you might have missed out on if you were in a situation that was very dominated by someone else's personality and somebody else's um, trying to keep them happy and trying to keep the peace, you know, um, yeah. things that happen in a codependent relationship. So, I mean, it's good for anyone, but I think especially people who know that they're in a relationship that isn't really that great, <laughs> isn't really operating in their favor to, um, to get out and feel the network of support that you really do have. And know that if you do get out, on, once you do get out on your own, that you'll be okay. So I found a paragraph that I feel like out of the whole book, it's it's the best to kind of tease what it's what your writing style is like, but also to sum up the purpose of the book. May I have your permission to read that for it for the listener? Yeah, now? No, I want to hear which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that there is nothing sexy about traveling with someone whom you are longing for love from and trying to please. All the love that you are is narrowed to this tiny little band of one mortal person while the whole world is crying out to love you. This luscious world of vines and dolphins and deserts, <laughs> mountains and margaritas, highways, <laughs> old diners, vast medieval museums, unicorns and tapestries. It is limitless. There is nothing any single person could give you that comes close to comparing to that glory, to that freedom, to that fullness of self. The earth is waiting to love you. It is eager to embrace you. That is the sexiest love of all. Wow. Oh, I love that. <laughs> And that is what that book is like. I was just, I could not put it down. You are such a fabulous writer. No wonder you're published all over the place. <laughs> oh, thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> really? That was nice to hear that read back. You read really beautifully. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure to read such a good book. And I want to again reiterate, I was reading from The Flagrant Joys of Solo Travel, which is out now on Kindle. You can get that and I'll have a link to that on the show. And if you've ever wondered about travel, if you've ever wondered about whether your relationship might be limiting you from, from experiencing more of life, it's a great read. And it's just entertaining to read anyway. <laughs> it it is it is fun and sometimes like having in a way that antagonist in the story <laughs> is kind of it gives it a nice little friction for storytelling yeah so so I'm appreciative of that well how does he feel about being your friction have you ever talked to him again has he amused by the book does he even know about I've, the book I don't know <laughs> I, I I don't know and that's on purpose. So. Yeah. Well, you know what? And and so when I had an, I've had some experiences in Peru, and I'm working on a book about those things. And I asked when I was there, there were there were some lawyers traveling with the first trip that I went because we were doing they were doing a film on on ayahuasca and all of that. And I asked the lawyers, "Can I write about this? Because I need to yeah. write about this." And they said, "This is your story. You can absolutely right. write your story. Think about the people that you might impact though by using their names." be 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 an in integrity with it but absolutely tell your story so yeah I'm I didn't worry too much about that because it's a matter of public record you know <laughs> they're they're like if anybody was that determined to stalk the history of this they would easily find that information you know so it would be kind of falsely disingenuous of me to like make up a silly fake name because we did do a lot of work together right you know like we were published together 
and you know it would be me writing a story in his photographs so it's not too hard to um to track that down and what i figure is i know he still has you know well, I'm, unless he burned them all like he uses <laughs> photographs of me and has in his shows so if he's able to tell his story with my pictures in it then right it's only fair <laughs> like and that's my life you exactly. Know? Well, and Laura, the other thing that I think is interesting about this book, so it's really easy when a relationship goes south to, to make ourselves to be the hero or the heroine and the other person to be the villain. And yes, I understand what you were saying about it, it was easy to write because there was that friction. Mm -hmm. But you do a wonderful job of showing us how we're our own worst villain, like how we create that because we stay in these situations and we sacrifice ourselves. And uh, until we decide not to. And right. so That's, it's not like you make yeah. him out to be a bad guy or anything. You kind of go, okay, and when I had enough, this is what I did. And wow, look what I get to do now. <laughs> yeah, my, my mother actually said, she goes, I thought you were very kind to him. <laughs> <laughs> it got mom's seal of approval. I love it. <laughs> I know. Was it though? She, I think she could have, would have had, you know, it would have been okay with her if I hadn't been quite as generous. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> But yeah, but you do really see that because it comes down to, um, you know, that idea of abandoning yourself and, yeah. you know, and then there's that story in the book about being in the cloisters. I let myself down yeah. in that moment, especially there were, there are a few moments that are really, you know, iconic to the story I'm trying to tell there, you know, in the whole arc. But really, like that moment in the cloisters, it was just heartbreaking because I looked at myself as a little girl and everything that I had yearned for and what what was I showing the past me that the future me was embodying for her. And I was so happy that I got a chance to make that right. Yes. Because a lot of it is really, you know, you let yourself down. You think, if I was a child... Well, How and we would are I stand children. Up for myself here. There's a little girl inside of every single one of us, and right. you broke your own little girl's heart. I did, and I did it. You know, yeah. it's easy to point again, like you said, it's easy to point outside and say, you know, oh, I was victimized or whatever. But I'm an adult, and that in that moment, I had a choice to stand up for the little girl inside myself that I am. Or to let her down. And I let her down in a big way. And I did that a lot of times. And so I was very happy to have survived all of that. And to, you know, and then to go around making her very, very happy. <laughs> and like, like, let's go swim with dolphins in the wild waters. And let's go, yes. you know, like, let's go see manatees. And let's go up you know, to New Newfoundland and see whales and let's go look at the unicorns by ourselves in the cloisters and, and the things that we yearn for. And like, to think of that, it's, it's, you know, I think we get sort of uh, screwed up sometimes in our thinking is that some sort of selfish self gratification, but it's feeding your soul and it makes you a better and stronger and loved person. Like, like the part where you read like the earth loves you creation loves you and you know follow follow your heart into the things that you love the women who read the book don't have to do everything that i do i mean i know it's not to everyone's taste but if there's something that they've been yearning to do to please not stop themselves because they think that the dude isn't going to like it you know go that's that is the message of the book. And it's such a powerful message. If, if you never wrote again, what a legacy to leave a book that gives all of the women who read it permission to let their little girl play and and to step outside of their need to please others and and resume that responsibility of the need to please all of ourselves as well. It's it's a balancing act. And and it's really easy to either become too codependent or too self it It really is yeah. kind of a balancing act. And I don't think there's this small pinpoint of perfection in the center, but we need to find that range where we really are happy and the other person's happy. And those are the kinds of relationships we really need to be creating for ourselves. Agreed. Um, yeah. And, and to know who you are, I think that's, 
you know, that's an important part to know what constitutes me and what am I bringing forward that's of value to me and to really know I value this and to stand for it because it's something of value. It's not, you know, something that's petty, but something that's that's really deep. Again, when you st- when you stand for something, you're like, I know this. I have a personal relationship with this earth, you know, the things that I love and um, and that you bring that forward into every relationship that you have. And knowing that you don't have to be afraid of being alone, you don't end up in those weird, disempowered uh, circumstances. Absolutely. Well, I love your book. I think we've done a great job of sharing it with listeners so that they hopefully feel inspired to check it out and future writings. of You write all over the place about all kinds of things. You have a particular article I think we want to talk about on this show. Aren't you about to do something with our friend Eva? I am. I am so excited to talk about this article with Eva. Okay, the article with Eva, it's a magazine. Uh, its new title is Enchanted Living. And I've, this is my 10th article I've done for fairy. I'm having to make, having to make the transition to calling it enchanted living, (laughs) but the editor had the idea they do themed issues and, um, the winter issue is celestial. And when she told me the theme immediately, I, I, it just popped into my mind. I was like, I want to do an article on light language and, and it was it was just an automatic. It was just and I was like, I have to ask because fairy has is about mythic and sort of enchanted fairy tale things. Right. But for anything that was more E.T. <laughs> <laughs> or extra dimensional and not extra dimensional, like in the realm of fairy, I I thought, OK, this is going to be a reach, you know, and. <laughs> But because it's interesting how that breaks down, you know, it's like in certain circles, you can talk about magic or you can talk about spells, candles, things like that. But and I, I think you you probably know what I mean. But if you go into yeah. you're, suddenly you're talking about extraterrestrial things, I like I could sort of have a joke that if I ever wanted people to leave me alone in public and I was reading, I would just like read a book about UFOs or something. <laughs> And have the cover up. And that way, no one would bother me except for really interesting people who really like UFOs and ETs. Right. <laughs> so, so when I asked uh, Carolyn, the editor, I was like, Can, I would really like to do an article about light language. Um, and she's like, OK, just please make it so it's not too, <laughs> too, too, <laughs> too out was, there, <laughs> too out there. And. But I was so happy that she gave me a chance to do it because, well, for one thing, it, 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 you know, it it builds on things that I've been wanting to work, that I've been working on in my own sort of self research, you know, going around with dolphins and experiencing um, different forms of communication. Right. That come from that presence um, that just totally being present. And that's another thing about solo travel is that you can hear and you can experience in, in those ways. And so light language being a nonverbal, um, or it's not, it's, it's verbal, but it's non syntactic. It's a different form of communication where you're getting downloaded, um, information in these packets. And I was like, okay, I want to do this. And Eva was one of the women that I wanted to, one of the practitioners they all happen to be women that I wanted to interview and so she did and so she's in it (laughs) awesome and she's so down to earth about it you know that's what I really connected with her we became friends after she was on the show and you can find that interview in our archives Eva Marquez she talked about Atlantis and Lemuria and she is one of the most grounded people to talk about the way out there stuff and and then she says that I'm the grounded wood but I'm like yeah but honey I can connect with you some of the people that yeah. talk about this stuff I can't even reel them in close enough to get that connection right I'm like yeah. they're out there somewhere and and I can't make sense of it she's really good at explaining things so I, I'm looking forward to reading the article because light language can be something that many people don't understand yes and I want to put a plug to say Eva really um, coached me 
in, at the very beginning of writing this book, she was part of that because I, I knew I wanted to write a book, but I was sort of, I was stuck on what form is it going to take? And when I, I, I had a session with her and she she said, well, why don't, why don't you do an ebook? Because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to do a book in the traditional way. I'm going to have to find an agent and then I'm going to have to, you know, get a publisher. And I, I kept getting bogged down in trying to get other people's stamp of approval yes. to tell this story, which actually underlies the themes of the book. Right. And, and Eva was like, no, just do an ebook. It's just your ego that's telling you that that's not important or authentic enough. And I, and I knew she was right. And she said, um, you know, just do an ebook, price it so that anyone can afford it. So it's in, in service. And that really set me free. And all of a sudden I could write, you know, whereas before I was very bogged down in trying to get it right. And so her session was really great. That's a plug for Eva. If anybody wants that. <laughs> she, she really did. Um, she really did help, you know, get me going. Or, she's good you know, at that. She's good at that. Me into that. <laughs> well, and, and I love that advice, you know, because it, it gets us out of our own way and gets us doing what we want to do, which is right and, and put it out there. So good for you. Yes. And um, yeah, I'm really, really glad that she did that. So when and is that enchanted? What is it called now? Enchanted en Living? Enchanted, enchanted Living. When is that publishing? Is it going to be it, January? Yeah. It should be December or January, and it'll be in by subscription or Barnes and Noble. Okay, Barnes and Noble. It's on the new, on the newsstands. It's usually near the fashion magazines. Is where I usually find it. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Well, good. We can go look for that. And you've you've written for Elephant Journal, and you write for some other different sites. So, how did you? get out of your own way to write period because you write for a lot of sources is writing some can you really write on demand or is it a habit or how does that work for you I write on demand because it's my it's my job to write on demand because um I actually am fortunate to have a job as a writer at a university um so I do I get assignments and I work on features for my job and and cause, so I'm a professional writer, meaning, and I think sometimes this is going to sound snotty, but sometimes I think that that's kind of the distinction of like, can you get an assignment of something and write about it? <laughs> yeah. And it's not just because I want to do it. Um, it's like being able to make something, you know, come, come through. Um, so it is my job. And, and I get to write more or less about things for my job, about things that I like. Um, but no, I think, well, I, you know, I have a, a background in English. Um, and then I had a job for a long time as a speech writer for the chancellor of Vanderbilt. And that was a great gig. I got really used to writing in his voice, though. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, after a while, it was really good. After my job changed, I started writing under my own byline yeah. and exploring. And Elephant Journal was actually really good. Um, I had a friend who wrote for it at the time, and she hooked me up with it. And all of a sudden, I, I was able to – I wrote a lot, a lot about pagan holidays. That was something I was doing. Those are all still online, too. <laughs> um, you know, like I would do one for every uh, high day all the Sabbaths. And then I would, and so that really helped build me up. It gave me, um, it helped build my dossier. And even though, you know, now I'm like, okay, I was doing a lot of writing for free, <laughs> right? It, which now I would not be as inclined to give away content for completely for free. But in the exchange of that, um, at that time, it really helped me build up a name for myself and a confidence um, yes. in myself as a, as a writer. So yeah, I can, I can write on demand. It, <laughs> might, be, it might be better or less, you know, like greater or lesser quality. But <laughs> well, that's quite a skill set. And, and I do, I really enjoy your writing style. So I hope that as a result of 
listeners connecting with you on this show, they'll check out your books and they'll check out your articles and get to know you a little bit. And hopefully join us over in Harmonic Convergence 333 on Facebook where we yes. connect about all kinds of fun stuff. There's so many great people in that community and I'm, I'm just really grateful to have gotten to know you now and, and, and just some of the amazing people that have shown up there. We're already putting together our next global meditation for 2019. So that's going to be fun and lots of stuff going on. So I'm looking forward to playing more with you there as well. Yeah. In the last, when you had the last global meditation, I think I mentioned this to you. I was in Costa Rica that day and wow. I had been in the, I had been out on the dolphin boat in the morning and then I came back to my, uh, my hotel room and that was where I did the live meditation with you all was, was that, that was wow. the environment I was in. That's I was very, awesome. Yeah, I was happy about that. Yeah, and and <laughs> that's the whole idea. It works wherever you are in the world, you can join us. And I, you know, I kind of picture us that we're all just these little light beings scattering around on the planet. And for these global meditations, we connect the grid and we really just amp up the light on the planet and the love on the planet. And it's a neat visual to hold and it's a neat intention and it's a palpable shift when we do those. I feel a, a shift and people continue to tell us that they experience shifts afterwards as well. So we definitely have to keep those coming in the future as well. Absolutely. And I think you guys, you, the way you curate the community is very conscientious and it really keeps the quality of intercommunication there very high and supportive. And, and that's, that's great. Um, with you and Eva and Tom. Well, you thank a, you for that. Yeah, it's it's a really sweet place that people can go to when they need to dip their to dip in and plug into that. Um, Good that network of light. Absolutely, that is the intention. So thank you for saying that. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you. I could do this forever, but I see we're running out of time. I like to end with a question that I ask listener that I ask my guests to share with listeners. After everything that we've talked about, do you have some kind of a parting thought that you think you'd like to leave with them today? Oh, a parting thought um, to. Okay, this is kind of. Um, well, to when you travel, when you're in any situation, please use your physical senses as much as you can. And when you're doing that, um, actually, that helps amp up your other senses. The more sensitive you become to the physical space around you through its scents and um, textures, whether you're cold or hot or uncomfortable or luxuriating in something, all of those things help make you more sensitive in so many other ways. And as we all move forward together, know that all of that stuff goes together. Your 3D senses go with your other, other senses. Um, it's a continuum. And to, to just use that and to appreciate the beautiful earth that has so much going on <laughs> that's really special and and to um, align yourself with those parts of the earth um, to believe in her capacity for healing and regeneration for her endurance her deep wisdom intelligence and survival um, when when you tend to get down ever she's really ancient she really knows what she's doing. So that's beautiful. And she loves us. She really she, does. She really, really loves us a lot. <laughs> Let yourself feel that. And, and just, yeah, as much as you possibly can. It's, it's great. Thank you, Laura. And again, I've been talking with Laura Marjorie Miller. You can find her at lauramarjoriemiller.com. Check out her book, check out her articles. Thanks for being with us, Laura. And thank you, listener, for joining us. What did you think of the conversation? We want your feedback and we welcome your support. You can do all of that at journeyofpossibilities.com support. And we'll look for you next week on Exploring Possibilities.